Okay, so um, I, I know my next video is supposed to be my 100th video, but uh, kind of ran into a little bit of circumstance here. Um, I'm not going to be at my house for a little while. Um, I'm just, you know, just going on vacation and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not finished filming my big Blu-ray update over here. Uh, not Blu-ray update, big Blu-ray collection video. Um, uh, it, a good chunk of it is done. Um, but that won't be coming for a little longer. So, uh, I actually went back and found one of my, I think it was from 2020, was, uh, like, my Blu-ray Collection Part 1. It's a very shitty video. It's, it's, it's filmed on, like, the, the normal webcam that comes with a computer. So, um, I took that down, and now I'm technically at 98, and I can get this out to you guys before I, uh, kind of head out. and give you a little bit of an update, um, instead of doing an update video, because I hate doing those things. Um just to give you some movies that I, I uh, watched. Uh, I was actually going to do a big roundup review, like 15 movies, um, and I hadn't finished that yet because that was just something on the side that I was working on, just kind of like, hey, I was gone for a couple of weeks with the, doing the 100 video. Here's all the movies I watched. I've watched five. Um, I, uh, two, three of them, I think, are streaming. No, th yeah, I think two, three of them are streaming, and then two of them are, are theatrical releases. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about those today. So f we're going to do a five movie roundup review, just quick thoughts on uh, all five of these movies. So uh, let's get right into that with the very first film. So the first movie up is Crush, and I had pretty high expectations coming into this one, um, mainly because uh, Hulu originals really haven't been that bad this year. Um, I really liked Fire Island that came out earlier this year, and uh, there was another one that I don't remember the title of that I watched that was pretty decent. So they, they haven't been all that bad. Some of them have, but, you know, that comes with the territory. But uh, they've been stepping up their game a little bit more, and a lot of people really seem to like this one, which is really what kind of pushed me over the edge to watch it. Um, and I, I was pretty disappointed. It felt pretty flat um, and was really nothing all that special. Um, it was really awkwardly uneventful. A lot of teen movies make this mistake of making it too much about ordinary life, and this movie's big issue is that um, the best teen movies out there, like Book Smart, like Empire Records, Love Simon, uh, Super Bad, those all take uh, ordinary situations and give them higher stakes, whether that be for comedic value, have an emotional punch, um, uh, or just showing like the camaraderie, camaraderie of being a teenager, or boyhood, obviously does that really well. Um, they, they all take something that's supposed to be ordinary and um, run with it in a, in a very unique and different direction. And this movie just kind of gives you um, sitcom situations, which was really, really disappointing. Um, because I like all the actors involved. I, I do like how positive of a movie this is for LGBT represent, LGBTQ representation. Um, just because it isn't a coming out story. It isn't a story about um, you know, like, the, the normal tropes. It was just a, a normal rom-com that is about a lesbian relationship, and I think that is something, obviously, we need more of in media. But with this movie, it, it just was too normal. That, that, that's my biggest issue with this movie. It was, it was too normal. It, it lacked a lot of style. It lacked any really good dialogue or any jokes, for that matter. Th this movie was trying to be comedic, but the, the jokes almost felt like non-jokes, in a very Disney Channel way. This movie very much gave me the impression of a PG-13 Disney Channel original movie, and that kind of sucked because, um, I don't know, it really hindered any enjoyment I could have had with this movie initially. I again, it's not the worst thing in the world. I'm not going to say this probably won't make my worst of the year list. It's just, it, it, it was fine. It, it was whatever. It was really... I don't know. Some parts I, I could see working, but this movie was just very there. And uh, I'm going to give Crush a, a strong, a light C+. Plus. I was originally going to give it a C, but you know what? Crush is going to get a, a light C+, because it was, it was just fine. It was offensively inoffensive. And the next one up is Lightyear, and I was really, really excited for this movie, uh, like a lot of other people were, I think. Um, I was very intrigued by the premise, and uh, even though Pixar is kind of losing their step a little bit. I hate to say that. I hate to be that guy that's like, oh, newer Pixar movies are terrible. Because no, they're not. Um, I've just been kind of underwhelmed by the recent output for them. I did really like Turning Red. I thought that movie was pretty good. It had its issues, but was still a really decent time. And I love Soul. That's 
easily in my top three Pixar movies. But uh, the, the other ones that have been coming out have just been kind of there. They're, they're not great, but they're also not terrible. I, I can't say that, you know, that they're offensive or anything. I can just... They're there. They're, they're animated movies that are just kind of there. And that's what Lightyear ended up being, and it was really disappointing. What made a lot of sense in hindsight is the director of this movie had only previously directed Pixar shorts, and I, I think that was the biggest issue, because this movie felt like an elongated Pixar short. Uh, yeah, I, I had no point after that, but it just felt like a, an elongated Pixar short. It felt like a very simple story that did not need to be told over however long. I think it was an hour and 46. Uh, this movie very could have easily been condensed to a Pixar short, and that sucks, because they, they could have done so much with this movie. They could have told an actually coherent story. They could have had a movie that wasn't so bland and so just kind of meh and so just there because um, it had all the elements of a movie. It had a story. It had a script, technically. It had characters. It, it, it had emotional beats. It had decent animation because it's Pixar. Um, again, it, it wasn't the worst thing I'd ever seen. I can't even call this one necessarily terrible, but I really did not enjoy it. I was, uh, one, I had a terrible theater experience. There was a lot of little kids in the movie theater that were shouting the entire time, which is fine, I guess, but it gets annoying. I don't want to be that guy, but still. Um, yeah, th this thing was just very there. It, it, for Pixar, that, that's not what their movie should be, in my opinion. I, I think the biggest mistake you can make with a Pixar movie is making it bland and inoffensive. Because, I mean, say what you will about Cars 2, that movie's a massive train wreck, but at least you remember it. At least you... Wow, that... What the hell was that? I would take that over something like Lightyear, honestly. Just because this movie was so inoffensive and so not present the entire time that it, it felt like... You know what, let's just put out a, a movie. Let's, let's, let's make a movie about Lightyear, but him as, a, as a, a fictional movie character, not the toy. And yeah, let's just throw that out there. Uh, but you're really disappointed in me, and I'm going to give it a light C+. This so may be a little bit of a shock to hear this. Um, I was pretty excited for Spiderhead, honestly. Um, I, Despite me not loving Top Gun Maverick, I really was intrigued for what uh, Joseph, I think it's Kaczynski, Kosinski, I don't know how to say his name, uh, next movie would be from like a raw filmmaking standpoint, because... I, I had my issues with Top Gun Maverick. I, I did not love that movie whatsoever. Um, I really liked the cinematography. I really liked the airplanes shooting each other, the dogfighting scenes. Those were great. It was highly exhilarating and entertaining, and I would really wanted to see what he could do with a more interesting concept. Um, I, I liked Oblivion. That's the only other one of his movies that I've seen other than this one and Top Gun Maverick. Uh, and I don't know, this, this had a really interesting premise that flopped very hard and delivered an extremely lame experience. This movie is, it goes to the points of being funny bad. Uh, the, the, Spiderhead is something, something different. Uh, Chris Hemsworth was just chewing up the scenery in this movie. He was ridiculous. He gave no effort, not actually, not even that he didn't get any effort, his effort was, effort was just so misguided and so hammy and so ridiculous that I, I could not help but laughing throughout a good majority of this movie. The, the kind of, like, oh, the real truth being revealed, the, the big twists and turns of this movie were so painfully obvious and so, what, really, that's the direction you're going for this, what? Uh, there's a joke, there's a, a legitimate shit joke in this movie that is so out of place and so wildly ill-conceived that it just, it, it, it takes you out of the experience and kind of makes you think, what the, what the fuck were the screenwriters thinking with this one? What, who pitched that? Who said, yeah, this is a good idea, this will add some comedic relief to this movie? Uh, it's just a whole ball of nothing with some of the worst screenwriting I've seen all year. Most of the movie's bland. Most of this movie really gives you nothing to talk about. Uh, and I hate having to keep bringing that up. I just saw a lot of mediocre movies uh, in this little roundup. But what made this movie particularly worse than the other two I've talked about is there were just moments 
that you take you out of the experience of being bored and kind of sitting there and oh this is all very drabby and not not you know nothing to comment on there are moments that will make you say, what what the hell was I just watching why did they put that in there why did somebody write that down and and that is disappointing this movie it was severely disappointing it had an interesting premise it has a talented director behind it but man was it misguided and man was it a colossal failure i'm gonna give spider head a really light c minus it it it's mostly inoffensively bad up until when it's kind of funny bad okay we're, we're getting to the positive side here uh this movie i did actually like i promise it's not just a ball of nothing like the other movies are emergency I heard a few people call this one something special after it came out on Amazon Prime a, a, a good while ago. Uh, and I remember just kind of pushing off and not really all that interested in it, but I definitely had a great time with it. I was very surprised at how much I, I really enjoyed this thing. The performances are on point all across the board and are what really make this movie special to me is the relationship between the three main friends and kind of the juxtaposition between their situation and the situation of the girl that they find in their in their. I think it's it's a house. Yeah, it, it, it is a house. It's not a dorm. Uh, and the genre subversion really works for the most part. It, it starts off as a, a kind of college party movie and, and very much takes a right turn. And I think it takes that right turn in a good way. It doesn't necessarily make all of the right decisions from a screenwriting aspect. It doesn't necessarily... Um, it has its rough patches here and there, especially the uh, sibling character of the girl that they find... She really, uh, she was not necessary. It felt like a kind of a tack on. And then, um, especially towards the end of this movie, the last 20 minutes or so after the climax were not needed whatsoever. They were just kind of an unneeded epilogue. Eh, it took me out of the experience a little bit and, and definitely soured my opinion on the movie as a whole. But the parts that were really great were genuinely great. It, it took its message seriously enough to where it, it was kind of horrifying at times and, and really made you think, but also didn't completely total a tip of the line of being melodramatic at all or being overly serious and still keeping the sprinklings of comedy in there. It has really good cinematography for a movie like this uh, um, and really emphasizes the relationship between the three main characters and how they're reacting differently to this situation, and I really did enjoy that. And what kind of made the ending disappointing is they throw that away a little bit and just go, oh, we're all friends, it's okay now, we made it out of this wacky situation. And th that, I don't know, I, that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. But the rest of the movie is genuinely really good, too great. I, I just can't call it best of the year material or anything like that, just because the ending, and, some, and sometimes the script doesn't do the best job of tonal balance, it, it can kind of have those rough spots of, eh, that could have been a little better, or moments that, you know, could have been tweaked a little more to make this something really, really good. But yeah, it had really good cinematography for kind of a, co a college party movie, even though it really isn't. Um, the central performances are really, really damn good, and uh, I just enjoy this movie. I had a really fun time with it, and I'm going to give Emergency a really strong B. Easily the movie that I wanted to talk about the most on this list and the one that I was most excited to see was The Black Phone. I saw it last Saturday and I, I was very, very hyped up for this one. My friend really wanted to see it and he kept showing me trailers and kept uh, getting me into this movie and kept like, hey, let's go see it. We want to see The Black Phone. It looks really scary. It looks really good. And I really wanted to just throw myself into a new horror movie. Uh, Cam really wanted to see it. She was really intrigued by it. We both just wanted a new horror movie that we could have a really fun time with at the movies. Um, and yeah, I, I really wanted this to be as good as everyone was saying it was. And I'm very intrigued by stories and movies about kidnapping. I really like uh, Nosferatu. Not not the original story, but the, the one with the license plate that spelled out like N-O-S-4-T-U or 4-2-U. Um, the Joe Hill book, I really, really like that. And I liked the series overall, but the book was really, really great. I just watched Prisoners for the first time and thought that was flawless. Just movies that, that do kidnapping right are so terrifying to me and, and such a real, like, like a reality that could happen, but it, it's just off that to where it, they can do some fantasy elements to it. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but I'm very much drawn to kidnapping movies because they are so interesting and 
are the most scary subgenre of thrillers and horror movies there is, at least in my opinion. Um, and I, I mostly enjoyed The Black Phone. I'm not as in love with it as other people are, but I'm not going to rain on anybody's parade if they think it's great. I just was a little disappointed by some aspects of it and didn't think it was the best thing in the world. Like I'm, I'm a little shocked that this is getting as much critical praise as it's getting. Uh, just because, I don't know, I, I didn't think this was anything that special. To me, it was just a highly entertaining horror movie. It wasn't anything more, and it wasn't anything less. Uh, Scott Derrickson's direction and depiction of the time period are what really grabbed me here. Th those were easily the best aspects of this movie, was how he could get a scare out of you, uh, even though it does rely a little bit too much on jump scares, which, um, eh, take it or leave it, but the way he creates atmosphere and throws you into this time period and uh really I like the color grading in this movie the shots in this movie the different you know all the different decisions made by the director even though he, you know what i mean was all very much scott derrickson and really uh is what gave this movie its personality and gave it like setting aside from other movies from just being and eh, that was a fine horror movie the the also ethan hawk was good but really underused they the grabber necessarily isn't even the central part of this movie which again is not something that i'm gonna say is bad necessarily but something i was disappointed by i wish she was more in this movie because when we got ethan hawk as a grabber it was really good but they kind of threw too many ideas at the wall with this thing and and not a lot of them stuck and that, that was my biggest issue with this movie was how much of a waste waste of potential it had because there was, again, so much going on. So many plot threads, so many subplots. There was like an A through E plot in this movie. And some of them really worked. Some of them really didn't. And the ones that didn't are, are kind of tipped the scale a little more into me not overly loving this thing. Again, I really did enjoy it. I, I did like this movie overall had great direction, Ethan Hawke was very terrifying. When the movie utilized its scares the right way, it was very thrilling. I thought the main protagonist gave a really great performance for his age, and there were moments of light comedy that I found pretty amusing. Again, this movie does not do the best with its concept. It kind of wastes um, any... I don't know, it wastes a lot of bigger ideas that it tries to push through in the movie and is way too messy and is trying to juggle way too many things at once. Is it the worst thing I've ever seen? Absolutely not. I'm still giving it a positive review. It's just disappointing for what I was expecting out of it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that made sense. But I'm going to give the Black Phone a strong B+. Plus. No, no. I'm going to give the Black Phone a strong B-, minus, not a B+. Plus. Um... So yeah, that was my thoughts. My, my, I'm, I'm going to call this uns an unscripted roundup review. Uh, just some thoughts on some movies that I saw uh, to hold you guys over until I come back from all my vacations and stuff. So um, other than that, I will see you guys later.